All right, so chapter 20 was your uh, kinematics. We, uh, we dealt with your distance and then your velocity, your acceleration. You know, two types, regular and the other one is angular. And we take uh, a look into these uh, aspects of your motion quantities, your motion quantities, and, um, and the... Uh, rigid body but this time we deal with the three types of motion you know, your um, rotation translation and general motion but then we bring the third axis which is your xyz okay instead of just studying uh, one axis or two axes uh, we're studying three axes in, uh, in the chapter 20 yeah so now we're now getting into kinetics, right? So, so kinematics. Uh, we finished that in chapter twenty. So we get into chapter twenty-one. Uh, the same thing, kinetics. Yeah, but again, you don't have to worry too much about it. It's because um, in this chapter, you what you need to know is uh, only concepts. Yeah. And we won't be covering the whole thing, yeah. I only want you to read one time, yeah. So I'm going to show you which one to read, and of course you will study um your quiz, yeah. Quiz is just a generalized um. You have two attempts to do that, and and the same questions are going to appear in your final exam for this uh, two chapters because it's. It's a way out of your knowledge, yeah, to be able to uh, calculate that. So anyway, so let's get into it. Okay, so the kinetics bigger, yeah, bigger stuff instead of particle study and body like we did in chapter twenty. Now we're going to be able to calculate, yeah, motion outside. So this example is showing you, hey, you know, the forces, yeah, acting on these motorcycles. We can be able to calculate it, yeah, by using the equation uh, in this chapter, of course. So let's take a look at uh, one by one. So first, we get into our moments, and then your products of inertia. Things that are staying want to stay, doesn't want to move. So when they are subjected to a particular motion, it's going to try to stay, yeah. Uh, so that's your know, inertia, yeah. And of course, uh, moments are. Moments are, it's in the name, you know, we study from one moment to another, uh, some changes. And what is what is different from what we have already studied is uh, we go into more details, you know, uh, when we study the rigid bodies. So here we'll get into six you know, different types of your inertia quantities. Everything that we study, moments, products, and I show all of it. And of course, um, of course, when we look at the body, your body is composed of many things inside. I have already told you so many times, yeah, again and again, and they all move. So you can be able to understand the distribution of that mass and body. And again, we're now looking at, they're all relative to each other, they're all moving, all of them are moving, okay? So uh, we bring in a coordinate system so that you can be able to locate them where they are, yeah, in that uh, original body. So um, if you understand your body has so many things inside, Mathematically, we can just pick a point inside of the body. You can be able to understand the motion happening at that point, okay? And in order for us to do it, we can use the coordinate system, yeah? So in simple word is, is what we've been saying all the time in class. We break them down into components to get the result in it, okay? Okay, and of course, um, this is just a definition and uh, your first definition, and you have to know that. So we review the moment of inertia, yeah, and this in this chapter we're gonna start to use element, all right, a different element, and we use a symbol, little m, and um, 
in the body okay of course this is not a how I how can I put this you can just use the word small all right small little mouse instead of a different show different show element um like that different show element I mean like they are they are just uh, different right they're similar but then different a little bit you know the difference is it's very small that's what we're talking about uh in the body okay and of course you are looking at that looking at these little element or mass element yeah uh in any one of the three coordinate axes yeah and you can define it mathematically it's just a product of the mass of the element because everything that we know right uh in uh, i would say in the human knowledge system we define the material as far as we know with the periodic table in your uh, chemistry you know all the elements in the periodic table in the chemistry that you study but that's all we have and if you think about the mass this mass is 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 made of of one at least one of the element okay sometimes they combine sometimes they don't and that's what we're talking about so product of the mass of the element so it's just a one single sentence but then it's so powerful yeah and uh and then the square of that yeah shortest distance from the axis to that element um we have to bring these coordinate axes because without that is impossible for you to be able to get any of the values yeah of these uh, quantities um so therefore when you define it you're gonna be out of the world because they are out of the world yeah they are inside of the world but not in the knowledge of in it is not in our brain okay you will have to this is a new information to your brain what your brain is familiar is what we're born of you know the daily stuff like at home and uh, of course going outside uh, friends and family stuff that's what we're familiar to but this is a uh, what we have what we actually are who we actually are what we actually are and what all the all the uh, things in the world are okay so element and um so we want to study how these things are moving we're pretty okay with all the big bodies you know moving uh, around us but when you have to go inside of each body, there goes an the issue, yeah, for you. So anyway, this is what we're talking about. Uh, this is just a little body, yeah, a little blue things, and you're like, what is that? First of all, you have to question, what is this little tiny blue thing that we're always studying, calling an object? That's a body, okay? It can be anything. It can be your table or a piece of um, paper. It can be a stone, it can be you, right? And it can also be uh, your pencil or something, yeah? And they're all made of some sort of element. And that element we have studied, you know, some... I don't like that the uh, students have a choice to choose physics, chemistry, and biology because you really need to study all three in order for you to be able to get to everything, you know, about what we have here. And so anyway, if you ever have time and if you ever have money and if you have any interest or whatever, uh, uh, trying to uh, get the fundamentals, your know, physics, chemistry, and biology in order for you to be able to understand the world. Or you can ignore everything and just live uh, with what you know, okay? Uh, so it's up to you what you want to do, how much you want to go to a study. So anyway, so what we want to say here in this chapter is little dm right that's now a new term differential element dm differential element again it's just a point uh, in your body what is this little point representing now we're bringing in material stuff 
which is your element, go all the way down yeah, to the very, very small thing. So we will have to use a coordinate system for us to be able to truly understand what's going on yeah, uh, with respect to motion at that little tiny mass. Okay, so coming into the moment, the moment of inertia, we are, we are particularly looking at the mass. Yeah, mass. So since you talked about the mass, we got to go all the way down to the element, the yeah, differential element of that material made up this little body right there. So anyway, so your R again is a distance between this, yeah, and then your axis right here, yeah. Uh, you can be able to find by doing <laughs> again, uh, which is looks very much like your Pythagoras theorem, okay, because it is. Because now you're dealing with a three-dimensional, see this little one, the one that Louis uh, uh, missed in all the previous chapters. Because of this yeah, thing, and I said, uh, when we are drawing it on the 2D, forget about it, don't worry about it, yeah, ignore it. And now in three-dimensional, you can see that triangle, yeah? So anyway, so the uh, Y square yeah, is going to be right here. And then your z square is going to be right here, yeah. And then of course your hypotenuse, here, yeah? the one that we are arguing in class. I said leave it out for now. Uh, yes, right there. Okay, it's very difficult if you uh, look at it on the two D paper, yeah. So anyway, so here are little changes again. Now we put the little tiny d, talking about differential, which is derivative, by the way. Uh, we are studying a very, very, very small changes, and this is your moment of inertia, yeah? And now we're bringing the axis, so therefore your subscript, see a little axis right here like that, and then of course your, your uh, distance is still there, yeah? And this time we're going to square it, that just uh, doing a derivative, right, the mathematics stuff, yeah? Which come from this little triangle right here, times your little mass right there because you're concentrating on that little mass motion yeah and then uh, of course since we are in kinetics we have to deal with all the mass stuff yeah mass I mean S S, and then of course you solve it down and you will get this don't worry about it don't worry about the uh, uh, deduction of this uh, mathematical expression okay I want you to definitely get this uh, definition please yeah we will cover only one or two sections in this uh, chapter, so uh, all I want is for you to read it if you have time. Don't read it if you don't have time, it's okay. Um, if you just, yes, uh, get at least one or two concepts, I would be very, very happy, yeah? So here is a differential element. Now you see a little bit bigger picture. So now you can see the triangle very clearly. We're dealing with this, yeah, distance. That's uh, far away from there to the axis, which is your yeah, x-axis, okay? And then, of course, and here is your z-axis, and then your y-axis, yeah? Why? Because this, see, that, and that's uh, totally acute. Therefore, the distances are the same, yeah? So your x is over there, your y is right here, your z is right here. Because see this little geometry right here, which you can be able to see, that just a square right here, so that with that distance and this distance is the same. So make sure you review your mathematics or geometry as well. So go slow, yeah. Don't worry about remembering any of this. I do not ask you, yeah. At least if you can get this uh, triangle thing and uh, definition, I'll be very happy. All right. From now, uh, from this slide all the way down, you don't need it. Okay. I just um, want you to read one time and it will be very difficult for you to understand so therefore we are not covering yeah you know, chapter 20 at all yeah you know? and you go all the way down yes just keep reading it's not even you know, uh, you can't be able to calculate it because there's a lot of factor calculation right there so i'm just gonna yeah just show you how complicated they can be and uh, we will go yeah you know, all the way down to um where am I? Uh, uh, 21.4, yeah, equations of motion. Okay, so the equations of motions, um, 
and the principle of work and energy, okay, center of mass, the concept are the same. I have already covered that in previous chapters, yeah? So all you have to do is just review the definition of that, yeah? Center of mass, principle of work, equations of motion, equation of translation motion, which is actually your F is equal to MA anyway, yeah? I don't care about this summation, I'm not asking you. But at least you have to get that the force is equal to mass time, the acceleration due to gravity got to be in your hand, okay? So your previous chapters, the first eight chapters, uh, they are repeated here, yeah? When we solve it, we deal with the three axes, that's all. I won't be going into any you know, uh, details for this uh, chapter, for this chapter, of course. So just um, procedure for analysis, we do the same thing. We draw the free body diagram, your force diagram, and then your motion diagram, yeah? Every time you deal with your kinematics and kinetics. So again, the same thing, we go to around, yeah? Go all the way down. Um, talk free motion. Uh, all I want is a definition, yeah? I want you to get the definition. So therefore, we go all the way down, yeah? To the review, yeah? Chapter review. So here, what I want you to do is, I have already explained the mass uh, moment. So that's your moments and product of inertia. Only one definition. And uh, try to be able to see the triangle, yeah? Where your geometrically the axes are. Um, the very first three slides that I cover. That's about it. You don't have to worry any other thing. But make sure you uh, get the, the uh, review, yeah, the previous chapter uh, definition, okay, which is your impulse momentum, of course, your principle of work and energy, your equations of motion, yeah, previous. Um, again, um, gyroscopic motion, you have to have at least a definition of that, which is the very first line. So, uh, gyroscopic motion is again your angular motion yeah so gyroscopic motion is we're using the euler yeah euler theorem and um and you have something called euler angles you yeah? angle first angle second angle and then the third one don't worry about uh of each one of them, yeah, deeper meaning. I only want you to get this definition of it. If you know, like, oh, gyroscopic motion depends on the yellow angles because they are rotating that way, okay? So every time you rotate and when you are studying that motion, yeah, in a coordinate system, you do have the angles in between these axes, yeah? So if you have... Uh, uh, the first angle. If you do not remember the symbol, I, I want you to remember all of this. Yeah, your phi, your theta, yeah, and then your chi. Yeah, uh, if you do not remember the symbol, uh, you can go with the first, second, and third angle because the first is uh, between your x. Yeah, the second one, of course, is in y. Yeah, here, and then the third one is yeah right here, uh, which is your z. Yeah. Um, here is a little bit difficult uh, for you to be able to see in this example, yeah, it's going um, going in between the two uh, axes. But it's okay, you know, these angle changes depends on the situation, yeah, uh, and the condition. So anyway, so you have uh, here, here, okay, and then uh, here, three of them, yeah, three different angles depends on your axis, yeah. Your x axis, y axis, and the c axis. If you at least know that, uh, you should be okay. So the angular motion of a gyroscope, okay, is you can uh, describe using three angles. Yeah, that's about it. So these angles are um, between your axis, yeah, axis, and uh, your uh, motion aspect, which is your angular velocity. Yeah. Um, your angular velocity again depends on your axis, so you have three of them. That's why you have three angles right there. Yeah. And I won't I won't ask you any of this. Yeah. That's just uh, getting into details of the angular velocity because we can break it down 
break we can break almost everything down yeah we can go all the way to very 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 small ones so right now we're we're at the level of quantum yeah quantum and then the plasma stuff going in so very very small so anyway so we gonna call when you break the angular velocity down you got precession and mutation and the spin yeah the way that the little tiny particle moves are very different from the big particles we are like uh, aggregations or very uh, too many particles so we we perform in the system state yeah because your body is a giant system um, we're living in many different levels like i said if you live in a human level human system we call ourselves with our name yeah and of course we use our system brain uh, and doing a study and all kinds of stuff but you can also live yourself at the particle state if you think yourself as aggregations or billions of particles then um, you are actually more powerful in a particle state than the system state by the way so anyway you don't need to get into that level of deep knowledge okay it is uh, if, you, if you get um, about this much yeah the um, uh, definition you're okay all right and and let's go into the top free motion i want you to get the definition of that top free is like it's just a one force you know it's not in there in that motion so your body is subjected to only the gravitational force you know your uh, force uh, of course so we're concentrating on things on the earth so you have your gravitational force so we're, we're studying a bodies with uh being subjected to the gravitational force it's not going to have any moments yeah on it and again your moments are steady about the center your mass center all the time don't forget that and at that time we call the, uh, that type of motion the top free motion why because you don't have any other force but gravitational force on that body so just make it simple you have a body you have only one force that is a gravitational force on that body. You're not going to have any uh, any moments you know, on it about the mass center. And we call that type of motion a torque-free motion. So make sure you get this definition about torque-free motion, what that is. Okay. The rest of them, no, you don't need it. Just read through. Um, so that that is all for this chapter yeah, pretty pretty light that's why we combine chapter 20 and 21 yeah 20 we cover a little bit of course uh, the first three sections and chapter 21 uh, only those i just mentioned okay a little bit on the 21.1 uh, sections and uh, what i cover in this uh, lecture that's all you have to do the rest of them, if you have time, you can read. If you do not have time, don't read. Yeah, that's it for today.